Hello, welcome back to this YouTube channel. My name is Anubhav and today I'm going to be talking about VPN load balancing in public cloud. Uh, you have workloads in the cloud and you want to access those workloads. Your remote workers would like to access those workloads in a secure manner. You can enable AnyConnect VPN and you can provide access or connectivity to your workloads in the cloud. However, a uh, number of uh, supported VPN clients is capped based on the instance size that you are hosting in the cloud. We start our smaller instance with 50 VPN endpoints and it can go up to 10,000 VPN endpoints. Uh, imagine if you have a workforce which is bigger than the number of supported VPN endpoints on your firewall, you can still have multiple firewalls at the edge which is going to protect, uh, protect your workloads from any kind of threats coming from outside and it will act as a VPN concentrator. Uh, your VPN users will initiate VPN connection, that VPN connection will land up on the firewall and from there uh, you can access your workloads. Uh, now it is important to enable uh, load balancing because um, you might require a uh, higher number of VPN peers which are not supported on a single instance. In order to do that, uh, you can um, uh, deploy your uh, virtual private cloud. In your virtual private cloud, you can deploy multiple firewalls. Once that is done, ensure that each firewall has a separate VPN pool. There is another option which is kind of a tricky option. You can have same VPN pool on all the firewalls and then you can pack your incoming traffic on inside interface of your firewall. However, um, uh, doing a um, a separate VPN pool for each firewall is a little easy and you can control traffic based on your route table. So in this example I have route table outside and route table inside. I'm going to cover what is there in the route table in the next slide but just to give you an idea I'm controlling my return traffic based on my route table. And in order to load balance uh, VPN connection I'm using DNS service of AWS which is route 53. And I'm going to be covering how exactly uh, the, uh, uh, Route 53 is going to provide uh, load balancing for your remote uh, VPN users. Uh, if you have a bigger network and if you have multiple availability zones, you can still provision multiple firewalls in an availability zone. In this example, what I'm trying to showcase is I have two firewalls in each availability zone and I have Route 53 and hosted zones uh, on my Route 53 uh, so that any remote user who is trying to access my um, internal workloads, he's going to initiate a VPN connection to a domain name and that domain name resolution is done by uh, AWS Route 53. So in return, I will get IP address of one of these ASAs and I'm, I will connect to that particular ASA. And my DNS resolution is based on TTL. You have option of specifying TTL in your Route 53 config. So you can definitely go ahead and tweak that based on your requirement. So now let's do a quick demo. I want to show you how exactly everything is going to work. Uh, in this demo, I have a virtual private cloud, uh, which is uh, 192.168.0.0.16. In that, I have three subnets. 0, 0.0 is my management subnet, 1.0 is my outside subnet, and 2.0 is my inside subnet. So in this particular case, I have deployed two ASAs. You can deploy a next generation firewall as well, but as part of this particular demo, I'm using ASA. Um, so on these ASAs, I have three interfaces. First NIC of this ASA is my management interface. Then I have outside interface, which is my second NIC. And third NIC is my inside interface. So uh, apart from that, I have 100.0 as VPN pool for first ASA, 200.0 as my VPN pool for second ASA. And then I have a route table which is, which is associated to uh, my outside subnet and that route table has a default route pointing towards internet gateway. I have another route table which is associated to inside subnet where I have added two routes. Uh, route for VPN pool 1 goes to firewall 1 
inside interface and route for VPN pool 2 goes to firewall 2 inside interface. This is how what I'm doing is I'm doing a, a, a load balancing. So my user who is on the internet will resolve name for my uh, VPN. Uh, in this case, it is answamivpn.com. So as soon as that resolution is done by uh, Route 53, it is going to provide a me IP address of uh, any of these two firewalls. And I will connect uh, to my workloads. So let's go ahead and uh, quickly log into Amazon console and I will show you all the steps. I'm now in my AWS console. I'm gonna show you virtual private cloud config, uh, EC2 instances and config of my Route 53. So let's go ahead and look at VPC first. Uh, I have a VPC uh, which is 192.168.00.16. In this VPC, I have uh, a management subnet, uh, which is uh, used for out of band management. And I have uh, outside interface or outside subnet and inside subnet. I have uh, internal uh, or internet gateway, which is associated to my VPC. And I have route tables on my VPC as well. So first route table is a private route table associated to inside subnet. Uh, if you look at this option here, it is associated to inside subnet. And in this route table, I have added uh, routes for my VPN pool. 100.0 slash 24 is VPN pool on ASA1. Uh, and um, 200.0 slash 24 is a VPN pool on ASA2. Uh, apart from that, I also have a public uh, subnet or public route table, which is associated to um, my outside subnet and uh, management subnet. Internet Gateway is making sure that I have connectivity from internet to my virtual private cloud only for outside and management subnet, not for inside subnet. Now let's go ahead and look at our instances. So I'll go to EC2 instances. In EC2 instances, you can see ASA1. It has three interfaces management, outside and inside. Uh, you can look at it. It is ASA um, uh, V50, which is C5 to Excel instance. So if you install that instance, it is going to be your ASA V50, which can go up to 10,000 VPN peers, uh, 10,000 any connect connections as well. So I have deployed two ASAs and this is a machine which is on my inside subnet 192.168.2.0. I'm going to be accessing this machine from internet um, uh, once my VPN is connected. So I have my uh, network completely set up for you. I'm going to be sharing my ASA1 and ASA2 config. Nothing special there, just a basic AnyConnect VPN con config. I'm going to be posting that in the description of that vid of this video. Uh, I'll show you that before before uh, testing my VPN connection. Let me quickly uh, look at my uh, uh, Route 53 config. So I have. Um, a hosted zone which is answamivpn.com and if I go there uh, you, you can see that I have two air rickets. First air ricket is pointing to public IP address of my ASA1. This IP address 107.20.113.251 is associated to um, uh, NIC2 of my ASA which is, uh, which is uh, my outside interface and NIC3 is inside. Similarly, for ASA2 as well, I have uh, um, a public IP address here and I'm controlling my DNS uh, resolutions based on TTL. I can specify it, I can bring it down to one minute, but for this particular demo, I'm just using 7200 as my uh, TTL and I'm using weighted average with zero, which means that it is going to do a round robin uh, load balancing between the two ASAs. So I'm gonna be now uh, initiating VPN connections. Before that, let me show you, I have uh, firewall one. Here on firewall one, if I run uh, show run include pool, you can see that I have defined a pool, which is 100.0. 
and on the second firewall it is 200.0 I have a continuous ping going to my uh, workload which is hosted in AWS so I'm going to initiate my VPN connection I'm going to be connecting to my uh, my uh, uh, hosted zone which is there in my route uh, 53 so I'm going to be connecting to that and let's see I'll enter my password I'm connected I'm getting replied back from workload hosted in the cloud I will go ahead and look at what IP address I got here so I have uh, IP address 200.0 okay um, which means that I'm connected to ASA1 if I will disconnect and clear my DNS cache on this workload I will I may land up on ASA1 as well uh, okay so let's go ahead and try that let me disconnect quickly okay connected let's see okay now I'm on ASA 1 uh, this shows that I'm able to load balance my traffic and I have multiple ASAs and I'm using route 53 to load balance my VPN users uh, so this same design is applicable for Azure as well uh, only difference is you uh, you may use uh, Azure DNS services or you can use all your own DNS and uh, make sure that you load balance traffic based on your um, uh, your DNS server um, and uh, um, soon I'm going to be uh, creating another video on Azure uh, showcasing similar kind of deployment for Azure as well I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching